What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Vestec Paladin. This is a knife that people have been telling me to check out for a very long time and thanks to my good friends over at Neves Knives, Jared and Kara Neves, um, I have one to look at. They, uh, they lent me a whole bunch of knives. In fact, here recently you've been hearing me mention them a lot. They, mentioned, they uh, lent me a ton of budget knives to assist in uh, my uh, quest for the perfect budget knife uh, series. Um, and uh, for that, I am ever thankful. So thanks again, Jared and Kara. You guys, if you have not checked out their channel, please take this opportunity to go over there and subscribe. They have some excellent content. If you guys have been enjoying my channel for a while or you're brand new, either way, I do have a Patreon. So if you'd like to support my channel and at the same time, get your hands on some really cool stickers um, and also gain access to my once a week Patreon exclusive content. You can actually gain access to that content at any tier, even the $1 tier. The support would mean the world to me. You'll also be helping me reach my next goal, which is 90 patrons. At 90 patrons, I'll be opening up another amazing giveaway that uh, anybody can enter, patrons, YouTube subscribers, viewers, literally anybody. So if you'd like to check that out, I do have a link right down here in the description where you can have a look around and uh, the support would mean the world to me. So anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement on this guy. Best deck Paladin coming in, it's a little over eight and a quarter. It's like 8.3 inches over. This is a big knife. Uh, from tip to scale, you're looking at three point, let's call it 3.75 inches on the blade. In some areas you'd call it 3.8. Cutting edge, about 3.6 inches overall. You guys know how I feel about Vestec knives. They make some of my favorite budget knives. Uh, they are manufacturing knives out of China, but they're definitely one of those brands that's making some super, super high quality, well-tuned, well-thought-out budget knives. Really, really like Vestec. Uh, let's do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. Rat 1 coming in at 8.6 inches overall. Actually very similar in length here. Uh, and in uh, you know the handle sort of thickness and and height and blade height you know there's some differences in blade shape and handle shape things like that but similar um, how about up against the Spyderco PM2 PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall so about almost I mean the actually the Paladin looks to be a little bit longer they're very similar in overall length how about up against the Benchmade Griptilian or in this case the Ritter Hogue Ritter Ho coming in at eight inches overall, a little bit shorter. How about up against the Benchmade Bug Out? Benchmade Bug Out coming in at 7.5 inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Spyderco Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. So how's the action on this guy? Well, it's running on bearings and like many knives in the budget category nowadays, it has an excellent flipper tab, excellent detent, excellent uh, snappy action. Uh, and uh, about a shake shot, a little bit of encouragement to get it to shake shot. It's, it's, it's great. It's really, really great. Um, you, we're, we're kind of at that point now. I've said this before. It's like you can kind of, you can expect this type of action for knives in this caliber. Um, but uh, Vestec's always done a great job. This is no different. It feels very good. It's very fidget friendly. No double clutch. Easy to disengage. Easy to deploy. No bad landing zone. No sharpness in the flipper tab. Everything is just great if you like flipper knives you're gonna like this one uh, let's go ahead and weigh it so what are we looking at for materials here well we're looking at a fairly large d2 blade let's actually get a measurement of thickness here uh, let's zero out take a guess at about 115 thousandths possibly even less than that only about a hundred well i'm sorry <laughs> no it's more than that oh what am i saying let's go again it's thicker than I thought. Wow, okay, let's put it up against the um, PM2, 135 to 140 thousandths. Okay, yeah, PM2, about 140 thousandths, so it is a little bit thicker than I thought. No big deal. You're looking at con slightly contoured G10 scales, countersunk steel liners with a little bit of milling there on the inside, um, but this is a fairly large knife, keep that in mind. Weight's coming in at 4.48 ounces, understandably. That's gonna be a little heavy for some people, but it's not gonna be completely uh, out of the ballpark for others, including myself. I do not have a problem with that weight. I carry knives all the way up to about 6.5 ounces. As I always say, carry profile is just as important, if not more important. Thickness up against the Spyderco 
pair of three you can see there we're looking at about the same thickness perhaps it's a little thicker down here at the butts let's compare it with this end comparable thickness this guy's a little bit thicker in terms of overall profile you know this way two knives that um, have awkward carry profiles that nobody ever complains about you can see there they are both substantially taller so this knife is not going to be difficult to carry it is a little bit heavier it is a bit a little bit longer than what most people carry but not going to be that big of a deal definitely not a knife that i would recommend you carry in basketball shorts or extremely tight pants this is not an ultra lightweight ultra discreet knife especially if you get it in this orange <laughs> not discreet at all um but uh you know it's going to do just fine in, in most other normal pant material um so anyways, we are looking at a satin finished D2 blade. Um, almost, I mean, it, it gives the appearance that it sweeps up, but it doesn't. Um, it's, uh, it, it's very handsome, absolutely. We have a flat that runs out about 65 to 70% the length of the blade. You have a satin finished swedge up top, and then you've got the satin um, down to the cutting edge. Really, really nice. Lots, um, lots of cutting edge, lots of belly, and it does get pretty darn thin behind the edge. This is gonna be a more performance-oriented blade than a lot of other blades that might come in the same 135, 140 thousandths-ish um, thickness, you know? It's not gonna be an absolute laser beam, but it's gonna be a little bit better performer than some other blades, you know, you might compare. We do have uh, thickness carrying out, you know, reasonably to the tip. You know, you, it's not going to be the strongest tip in the world, but it's also definitely not going to be the weakest. I mean, up against the pair of, or the uh, PM2, you can see the PM2 a little bit thinner at the tip. So it's going to be good at puncture tasks. Like I always say, don't pry with your knife, but you're going to have a reasonably strong tip there. We do have a uh, definitely a sharpening choil, definitely not a finger choil up top. You do also have some functional jimping, definitely enough to bite into your finger without uh, causing an issue. Uh, in terms of, you know, just it's not going to hurt your finger or anything like that. Um, we do have a little bit of sharpness there on the edges. It's going to, you know, as you see, it's sharp enough to wear my fingernails away, but no big deal. Not something I'd complain about at this price point. Um, it says Paladin and D2. It does, you don't need to put Paladin on the blade. We, we know what it is because we're buying it. I like the Best Deck logo here. Uh, D2 is fine. We don't need to put Paladin on the blade. Um, I think they did that with a lion as well, and that you know it's like it doesn't need to be there. It's not a deal breaker though. Oh no, proprietary pivot. No, nope, the adjustment side's right over here. That's just how this side looks. It's like that on a lot of their knives. No big deal. You've got an adjustment set on this side, which I believe is a T8. As per tradition on this channel, we're gonna get out my handy dandy we a bit selector. And we had driver, both inc incredibly inexpensive items. You can find them down in the description, along with many of the other knives that I show on this channel all the time, whether they are expensive or they're inexpensive. There's also some maintenance items, some other tools down there, a whole bunch of stuff. Whatever it is, um, whatever your itch is in this uh, EDC and folding knife world, check out my description. There is tons of stuff down there uh, for you to check out. Um, the pivot. That's definitely a T8, and the body screws are definitely, I'm, I'm just gonna make a guess that those are T6. Yeah, those are T6. Uh, so, same thing, <laughs> I feel like a broken record. I do not like T6, I like T8 and above. I wish all the screws were exactly the same and we'd make a universal move to T8 body screws, but it's not a deal breaker, no big deal. Um, contoured G10 scales, really like the contouring. Everything's nicely knocked down. This feels good. There's no, you know, some, I suppose you'd call it pointy, but it's not really like pokey, gonna dig into your hand or anything in normal use situation. I would not choose orange. A lot of people love orange. You know, this is, I mean, definitely, if you're gonna work outside and you risk dropping or losing your knife on a regular basis, orange is definitely gonna be helpful there. I would go with black, um, definitely. There are different colors available so you can pick. Just like all the other knives, well, in, in, any knives that do have Amazon affiliate links, um, I will include a link for this knife down in the description so you can pick this up. You'll be able to choose the color that you like. Ergonomics in this guy are fantastic. Uh, I can lock in very easily. It's very comfortable. Feel very secure. It feels very natural. 
Um, this feels like you know a, a tool that's ready to get the job done. So I appreciate that. We do have a uh, lanyard hole back there. It's big enough to fit some 550 through. I appreciate that there's only two screws into a backspacer. The backspacer is a little bit boring. Um, I would have at least, if it's going to be G10, I would have at least preferred um, that we have a different color um, at the very least. And honestly, I would have preferred uh, some gear pattern back here just so I could have a little bit of texturing. But I, I feel like the, the backspacer should be black. Um, and on the black one, maybe uh, they do gray or something like that. When it's all one color like this, it just kind of looks blah. But functionally, it's doing its job, and um, I can't feel the seam, so it's very well fitted. I mean, the fit and finish on this guy is, is just great. Pocket clip is, I think, exactly the same, if not very similar, to the Bestec line and perhaps some other models in Bestec's line. It does its job. It's fitted into the G10, so you're not going to have any wiggle or anything like that. I appreciate that. It does have a little bit of a bill. It's probably at some point going to catch something and bend out, so you're going to have to take this off and bend it back down. If it breaks, that's kind of a bummer because Bestec's out of China, so getting another clip is kind of meh. Whatever. You know, it's a pocket clip. It's going to do its job. It comes in and out of the pants with extreme ease, so no issues there. Like I said, the adjustment side of the pivot's right here. Uh, we do have close to perfect centering. At this price point, I don't really judge it too hard. Most best decks, all the best decks that I've ever purchased brand new have all come perfectly centered. This is a knife that doesn't look to be used very much, but it, it came from Jared and Karen. I know they use their knives. So it's possible this knife just needs a quick turn of the pivot and it'll come back to center. It's definitely not rubbing though. Lockup is coming in 50, 60%, which is normal and no blade play up, down, left, or right. So. Once again, um, downside, you have some T6 body screws. There's a bill on the pocket clip. I would prefer that we had some contrast here on the backspace or maybe some texturing. No big deal. That's pretty much it. I mean, this is another like obvious home run from Best Deck. And I knew, you know, when people started telling me about this knife, check out the palette and check out the palette. And I knew that I was going to like it. You know, I like what Best Deck's doing. They, for the most part, Best Deck seems to be like, let's make a tool first and then worry about how we can make it kind of stylish. But the stylish flair that they add to each of their models is, for the most part, pretty subtle. And I like that. They're building tools. They're catering to people who like, you know, the, the trend right now is, are, is um, flippers that have a good detent and a good action. I don't, for whatever reason, I'm missing that. But this knife can be deployed in a push button fashion. It can also be deployed in more of a light switch fashion. It's great. It's very easy to, to play with. You know, this is a good tool. I like D2 Steel. Um, I like Best Deck. I think this is great. It's definitely going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. By the way, did I talk about the price? You're looking at $50, 55-ish dollars on this knife. Some places you can find it less expensive. That's very appropriate. It's very similar to other Best Deck knives. Yes, I know that there are knives out there that have um, arguably better materials. You know, you can, there, Two Suns making some stuff that's for a little bit more money. You can get some TC4 titanium and carbon fiber. Um, but, uh, you know, it's like in, when I'm thinking of a tool and I'm thinking of what I need and what I don't need and what I prefer, what's going to, um, you know, cause unnecessary excess weight, um, pick, pick what you like, buy what you like. But um, these are straightforward tools. They have made it as light as they could on a design, you know, of this, this blade height, thickness and length, you know, considering everything. Um, I think that this is an excellent build quality. It's what I would like to carry with me um, if I was going to be outside working and there was a likeliness that I was going to use a knife. While I still do appreciate some of those budget titanium folders that are coming out um, with the carbon fiber inlays and things like that. It's really cool. Either way, this is a good price for this knife. I have no issues with that whatsoever. So like I said, if you want to pick this up in whatever color you want, there will be a link down there in the description. Um, this is going to go on my most recommended knives playlist as well as my cheap knives that I like playlist. So check those out. Um, that's going to be pretty much it for today's review, guys. Short and sweet. This was another easy one, another fantastic knife from Best Deck. And again, thank you very much, Jared and Karen Neves, for lending this to me. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.